So it is particularly useful for system administration, which Mara will speak a little bit more later, and also file management of your computer system. Uh, a lot of the corporation use Bash to generate reports, especially in the midnight time, right? Like, like profit report or number of active users that are using CMS system, you know, uh, and also automating different tasks. So Bash is mainly used uh, for these purposes. So before we go on the details of Bash, I just want to get a sense of the audience here, maybe also for online audience as well. Anyone have experience with Bash? Or, or the terminal? Or general. the terminal, maybe in general. And if you have, or do you do you like it? Maybe you don't like it, it's fine. You know, it's fine that you don't like it. You find it intimidating, but maybe you like it. Uh, and we are interested to know why you like it. And what are the syntax or functions that you use the most? So, you, anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I was chatting with a friend yesterday. I find command line interfacing with computers really, really interesting in terms of where you feel physically and mentally located if, if you're using command line as opposed to using like a simulated uh, environment for one to the less kind of definition. I use terminal a little bit, but I like using command lines on other systems. And I like the sort of sense of presence or sort of human with object rather than this sort of dislocated being within virtual space that, that these kinds of things present. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. How about the others? Yeah, I think for me personally, uh, in terms of technical experience, I feel for example, if you want to upload or to download GitHub files, like you do use that command to navigate it, you can like upload a bigger file than the green interface, like the, the, small, the desktop square. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about others? Yeah. Yeah, I. I really enjoy using terminal uh, because it feels like you're, uh, as I said before here, like you have um, more control over the machine and you start to get like those inner patterns uh, more. And it's, yeah, and also it gives you some access, like, um, like you can really like do things like as the admin or that it was not some post to be done by the user, like uh, that those companies like created the machine to be like this black box that you cannot access some kinds of uh, uh, systems inside of it, but mm. like with the like, fashion terminal, you can sometimes like access mm. these as well. So you feel like it's a, a weird power, but also like has lots of responsibilities because it's gonna also like mess everything up. <laughs> <laughs> but I also like your idea about like, the feeling of control, the feeling of knowing your location, you know, where actually you are locating or where you are situated. And also because when we are using other interface or other programming language, it's sort of like there are already different abstraction of layers, mm -hmm. right? like JavaScript framework, for example. There's nothing you want to say? Yeah, just to echo the same sort of ideas of um, feeling present in a location, you always know which directory you're in, whereas you know, when you're in some sort of GUI or, or desktop environment, it's, you can be in multiple places at the same time, depending on your focus of what window you're on. And mm -hmm. that, that comes with a bunch of, um, yeah, like abstracted layers of the bring with them certain perspectives, certain uh, inbuilt biases towards certain workflows. And I'm also interested in the, this kind of, kind of aspect of control because, uh, the terminal and, and bash it seems to offer that that but i haven't interrogated it massively but i imagine we will get onto this but but i'm interested in, in what other kind of biases and biases that come with the development of from operating systems which we all know you know if you're using a mac it comes with all of that baggage. <laughs> if you're on Windows, it comes with all that, that baggage. Mm -hmm. And then it's just kind of purported to be this kind of haven of, of, of uh, perspectives outside of that kind of corporate mm -hmm. uh, thing. But I imagine it's not. And mm -hmm. I imagine we'll, we'll get onto that. But yeah. 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 
There are some people online. Yes. Yeah. So Ben, you were mentioning for Duden, I guess it's like the syntax that you use the most, right, Ben? In Bash? Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, so then why do you use Bash for, I mean, for your, uh, I mean, like for example, like this kind of for loop syntax, you can also use other programming language to use it. Why in particular Bash that interests you? Well, um, yeah, I, I guess because it's just for very quick things, right? Not for programming code. I mean, like splitting up loads of PDFs or doing some kind of um, repeated operation. I find yeah. very good for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So something that is also quick and easy to to do it uh, instead of like you need to open another software uh, to process like batch uh, tasks, right? And, like, yeah, you... exactly. I mean, something that you can't be bother to write software for but you'd rather just do it very quickly and easily yeah 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 thanks 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 for that i guess it's also one you know like by hearing some of your comments you know i feel like this is also something that i find interesting about bash and terminal i remember when i when i taught in all those university uh, or especially introduction to programming class a lot of students a very difficult time in locating where they are in the computer systems, especially like just downloading files or finding a path, uh, like the images path or finding the file that has been downloaded. They have difficulty in like working through this file and directory. So that I find like, oh, okay, maybe his days are value for for you know terminal systems. Yeah. And especially now the cloud and services, and people are even more confused of uh, how this works or how are the files uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Where's my stuff? Fun. <laughs> Where is the stuff? Yeah. 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 I guess it's like also especially nowadays with iPad or tablet, yes. right? Like. Uh, but the uh, younger generation, they exposed to the internet or, or the computer system with just icons, right? Just click and then everything is, is there, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe we also take it for granted, like what does it mean by is here, right? Mm -hmm. What that means. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. So why, why bash not like free shell or something, for example? Like why not use it free shell? And what's the yeah. advantage of using bash? Bash is an extended, uh, uh, let's say, uh, shell of uh, C cell, for instance. Uh, it has uh, some uh, extra features. Uh, Z cell, actually, it's even, uh, it's actually uh, a step further than Bash. Uh, but Bash comes default in Linux uh, systems. I know in Mac, uh, the latest Mac, yeah, the Z cell, cell yeah. it's uh, the default uh, cell. Yes. But since we are invented in Linux, uh, and uh, Bas has a, a big has a big history, mm, uh, mm, and yeah. it was the first uh, cell that uh, it was developed uh, as a free uh, software from the Free Software Foundation. We have slide talk yeah, about this talk about in a minute. It. So they share is now free. It is, but it's uh, recent. It's more recent. Uh, yeah. yeah. But earlier days of Mac OS, the Bash shell is the was the default. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. In the early days, a few Linux distributions are moving to Z shell by default mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has some. Uh, yeah, as I said it's a, 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 a development of Bash. It has even extra, uh, more extra commands and uh, features. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Though. When, sorry, when you run a script uh, and uh, you don't uh, specify uh, your path in the script, it's going to be run by bash. Yeah. Yeah. So the binary, uh, default binary is still uh, the bash binary. Yeah. Along or the cell yeah. binary, uh, binary anyway, it depends. We have a lot of shell here. But that's also maybe responding to your question, Eva. It's like why bash? Right? We have been constantly asking ourselves in the last couple of months, why <laughs> bash? Right? I mean, there are a lot of uh, different shells eh, going on. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. The list. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think we have included in this. Uh, yeah. But if you do a Wikipedia search, you know, like just search for like computer, you know, kernel shell, there's a list of um, different shell. But why we are particularly interested in bash is also because of it, it has a long history. You know? mm -hmm over 30 years, and it's still very useful uh, nowadays. You know, still a lot of people are using Bash. And a lot of the commands haven't been really changed much, you know, in that sense. 
And, and of course, Bash, like any other kind of shell, also runs in the terminal, which is like a test-based instructions that we are particularly fascinated with this uh, environment. Yeah, and again, eh, because of its community and cultural history, and we want to approach the problem of gender. So it allows uh, for this research. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember Bang, like online, you just mentioned about like you don't like that's a, you, you more see Bash as something that you can do it quick. Uh, but I also find interesting about Bash uh, because in the last couple of years, I've been using Bash and then trying to run through different syntax of Bash. Uh, actually, for Bash programming, this program language is also consists of like really basic um, computing principles. For example, like variables, like loops, like arrays, uh, while loop, and you know these kind of building blocks um, that are also available um, in Bash. So we find one of the reference, uh, Posin, talk about using commands somehow like a programming language. So later on, we will show you some of the syntax of Bash. You know, for example, like this one, uh, example like echo, hello world. It is actually a syntax echo, which means display the text on the terminal. Right? Uh, it is also similar to Perl. The programming language is also similar using echo you know, or some other Nowadays, modern uh, high-level programming language use Prim, right? Prim Hello World. You can also use Prim uh, in, in Bash as well. So in a way, this is kind of like a programming language, programming syntax as well. And what we also like about Bash and Terminal in a way, because we see this is an access or interface that interact with your operating system directly. You can interact with the file structures. You can also call different programs like um, like image magic mm -hmm. uh, to do image, like poster generator or, or, Python, or, or, Python or, or many other things. You know? It's sort of like as an interface that you can call different things in your computer. Right? So this is really come back to the concept of shell. Right? The, sh the idea of shell is really able to allow you to access to, to the operating system. And if we need to have a definition of shell, it is a command line interpreters. So this is just, you know, there's so many shell. If you do a Wikipedia search, there are a lot, but we just want to highlight a few, like earliest uh, shell, uh, the Thompson one in 1971, and then the Bruno shell in 1976, and then come to Bash shell, uh, 1989. And then in 83, uh, Apple uh, developed their own GUI shell. And Mara will talk more about shell. Mm -hmm. But just to maybe clarify that the, the 1989 uh, was the release of Bash, but the the work started much earlier mm. of developing uh, already in 18, uh, yeah, mid 85, yeah, mid 80s, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so here is sort of like give you a sense of like why Bash, right? Because it's a long trajectory, it allowed for more thorough research for us. And also we are interested in like, like the interaction with the operating system in, in general, right? But then we are also interested in the culture aspect around Bash. Uh, particularly, this is something very mundane in corporate culture, particularly like automating tasks. You know, if you work in the industry, like a lot of time, especially in the midnight, they have a lot of con job, you know, like uh, different small tasks that they have to run uh, because in the midnight is because um, it's busy, you know, like there's so many reports that you have to run for a company. And midnight time is usually less busy for the server. So there are a lot of these kind of tasks um, uh, or a, a lot of labor jobs you know, actually being automated. And it is also ubiquitous as well. Uh, because a lot of the servers, uh, systems, administrative or security maintenance are uh, using uh, Bash or command line interface, such as file management, generating reports, data processing, and also automating tasks right? like logging, even like updating uh, your CMS system or updating your operating system. And one of the strengths about Bash is it allows currency so which means you can actually run several bash program in your in the server so this is more like from an industry perspective uh, in terms of how this has been used but not just only about the culture like like how it is being used um, 
but we are also interested in how this has been changed over time, particularly um, with big giant corporations like Amazon and Google automating or having developed their own dashboard. Then it becomes the role of system administration become marginalized. So in that sense, so we find Bash is a really interesting object of study, both in terms of technical aspect and also research uh, object in the area of computational culture. So these are some of the area that we both find interested to dig into, and we will also have slides to elaborate. So one of the issues is around gender, uh, not just only in Bash, right? We all know also in free and open source culture, and then if we step back a little bit, it's the whole tech environment uh, that have the problem with um, very male uh, dominant environment. And then the second one is the critique of the tech environments that I briefly mentioned, right? It's the dashboard nowadays developed by Amazon and also the change of labor practices uh, in the tech lands landscape. We hardly find like, of course, in computer science course, we find like introduction to programming or server client uh, courses. But system admin, it becomes a how to use the dashboard, right? Instead of like working with terminal or, or, or other shell. And then the other aspect that we, we want to think about with this project is um, the different assets and control in relation to command line interface and graphical user interface. What does it allow? What does it mean? You know? Of course, this also related to digital literacy, especially for the newer generation, right? Like they used to just jet and drop without knowing the computer operating system. Is it important to know nowadays? Do we need to know what exactly the file that we are downloading? Or when we have to code, right? When we have to do coding, is it an important thing? What kind of invisibility um, that it allow or limit? And because we are both artists, we are also interested in creative work around it, that people use batch in a very different or creative ways. So we will also showcase some of the creative works by other artists and, and practitioners uh, in a minute. <laughs> Over to you. But I think I want to go a few slides before to talk a little bit about uh, this image. Uh, so we see here uh, the cell, right? We talk about the cell. The kernel is the inner uh, layer, and the, the outer layer is the utility. So the cell is a kind of uh, uh, it's our our window to talk to the kernel. The kernel is uh, what is very close to our machine, and the utility then is uh, let's say the higher uh, level in our computers. It's the software we download and the the libraries. We choose that uh, because we need them to do uh, the work we have to do. Uh, so there are there are these three layers that uh, is useful to explain before going to the Unix uh, operating system. So as I said, yeah, you have the cell that talks to the uh, uh, kernel, and uh, this was a uh, an important breakthrough in the 70s when they were trying to uh, build an operating system that uh, it can be uh, portable, that it can easily, uh, or, like not easily, but that it can run in different hardware. Until then, uh, usually uh, the software and the hardware, they were very much uh, interweaved. And uh, that uh, would mean that you had computers for special uh, reasons. Uh, it was not a, it was hard, to, difficult to have a machine, to imagine a machine as we have it now, multi-purpose. Uh, so um, the main uh, uh, breakthrough uh, feature uh, of Unix at the back then in the 70s, uh, it was uh, that um, uh, they designed it, uh, that it, the design was less functionality in the kernel. So then the user could actually, as I mentioned before, could uh, install the tools they needed for their own work. So uh, uh, the operating system became lighter and uh, easier to talk to the hardware. Um, but it's also, yes, here we see the first developers of uh, Unix. Uh, this, the picture is at the Bell Labs of AT&T in the United States. 
uh, until the uh, uh, beginning of 80s, AT&T was uh, actually a monopoly, tele telephone monopoly in the US. So uh, while they were doing research uh, in computing, they couldn't the license it because they were a monopoly. So after the 82, they stopped. They stopped uh, being a monopoly and then they could actually open the market for uh, computation uh, from their company, I mean. And they licensed uh, uh, the first uh, unit version in 82. Here we see, um, how can I call that? A version. Oh. Yeah, a, a reconstruction of uh, of this first uh, machine, uh, the PDP system, that uh, it, uh, they ran the Unix on it. And maybe it's a funny story uh, to narrate. Uh, they were trying to they were trying to run uh, the first uh, experiments of Unix in other machines, and it didn't work. And then this was like a, a cast over a, a left uh, alone a machine in in a, in a room. And they just uh, uh, they thought, okay, let's quickly do an experiment. It actually didn't work. And then they focused on this. Uh, this is a stripe. Uh, it's a binary tape. Uh, we can see actually the Unix, uh, uh, let's say, code was uh, compiled in a binary uh, form, and then it's mounted on these uh, slots. Yeah, actually, it uh, translates from code uh, to the binary uh, tape. Mm -hmm. So uh, while researching uh, about uh, Unix and how it developed, uh, just to remind here again why Unix, eh? because Shell is the to talk to the operating system, and Unix is one of the operating systems that we all come now with. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, men, men, and mostly cis men uh, working on it, from photos, from quotes, uh, from the people like, you know, reference, referencing to each other. Um, what is interesting though uh, is like um, for uh, a hardware, uh, called, like for hardware detailed work, they would uh, actually uh, hire women to do uh, very specific specialized uh, labor. So here we can see, oh, so this is the uh, clay one, it's a supercomputer, I don't know, it's quite funky. They went okay, <laughs> to the sofa around it. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> And we feel uh, you could enter actually it's like a semicircle and we can see also all from here all the wires and all these they have to be the same length in order for uh, the processes of the computer to have the same time to be processed in the same time and for this uh, role they would then uh, yeah they would hire women to do it uh however we did uh, find <laughs> a non-male uh, developer in the bell labs uh, uh, Lorinda Cherry, she was uh, mostly working uh, for uh, developing uh, uh, graphics. Uh, but uh, we found a very interesting uh, uh, demonstration of uh, uh, bus and of uh, pipes. We will talk more about pipes uh, later, but she gives a very good uh, short introduction. We'd like to play a little bit the demo. Uh, maybe Brian did earlier was he typed all the commands, the, the five program names, uh, for his spelling checker on one line using the pipeline facilities. Now that's nice, except that you may want to check documents uh, often, and you don't want to have to type that long sequence of commands. So it's possible to put all of these commands in a file and tell the shell, when uh, I type the name of that file, I want you to execute the commands that are inside that file. Let me show you an example of this. We have a program called Spline, which uh, fits uh, curves to a set of data points. And I've got a set of five data points that we're going to oh, see what the curve exactly. looks like. I'm going to run Spline through uh, a program that turns uh, this into graphics called Graph. And I'm going to run that through a, spe a special program that turns the graphic language into uh, something specific for this terminal. I only need to type plot and data because inside the file plot is this string of commands. And here is a result of plotting those five data points on this particular terminal. The ability to put... So we saw uh, how uh, we have the command and then we have this symbol pipes 
that can actually change change uh, different uh, commands and process data. And here, just to give a, a very, very brief uh, overview of uh, from the 70s to uh, how we jump to today. So we, we mentioned before uh, the uh, at and first version uh, of Unix in the 70s, mid 70s. And uh, since uh, they saw that uh, it had the potential, potential to be successful and uh, portable, they really focused on, on this. Uh, and uh, we have uh, different versions until the 80s, until uh, then the beginning of 80s. And then, as we said, they, they licensed it, the operating system to start selling it. Uh, one of the main developers, I think it was Thompson, he started working as a teacher in the Berkeley University of uh, California. And there they uh, made more extra development to customize the Unix. Uh, and now it works, it has become the uh, BSD, maybe some of you have heard this distribution of Linux. Uh, apparently, the networking uh, protocol happened uh, uh, in this uh, distribution. Uh, yeah, in the eight, uh, yeah, 82, 84, uh, Unix becomes commercial uh, as, uh, as a proprietary uh, operating system. Uh, and then we start to have uh, the beginning of uh, the free software uh, movement. And uh, they really started to think of a free version of, uh, of uh, Unix. Uh, and from 80s to the 90s, yes, then we start to have the plethora of software around uh, Linux. So Unix became the free software, the free uh, became Linux, which Linux is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, 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 the free uh, equivalent uh, of Unix developed, uh, the kernel developed by Linux Robotics. Yeah. Oh, um, you, you said that they transitioned to a sort of free version of Unix. Was that impetus from AT&T? No, 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 not at all. I mean, Unix uh, in Mac, yes. because Mac is not uh, Linux, it's not yeah. free. Yeah. You don't have the source code uh, no. anywhere. Yeah. So no, uh, the Free Software Foundation started to work on Bash. And Bash was again a how you call it um, a free uh, version of the cell of Thompson. Thompson was uh, one of the developers we saw in the previous uh, pictures. Um, and then they said, okay, we are run, we are making this software eh, to talk to our machine, but we need the machine running a free operating system. And then that came came together with the development of the Linux kernel. But uh, as I said, the Linux is from this uh, Linux Torvald is a huge uh, developer. <clears throat> so these kinds of things happen in parallel and then they merge. Uh, yeah, and since the 90s and uh, is now uh, even more, uh, and Linux has become uh, more, more, more uh, approachable, more accessible uh, to people who are maybe afraid <laughs> of the terminal or they don't. Uh, have the privilege to know how to configure a lot of things themselves. Now you put right? I think it's more accessible. Ubuntu, yeah. But Debian also now has become quite uh, accessible too. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. With the graphical interface, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so here just to uh, um, stretch that, uh, that uh, First, uh, I was, we saw that the uh, uh, Unix uh, uh, feature, uh, main feature was uh, less functions in the kernel and, uh, and then be able to customize it uh, further in the user land. Another important philosophy of Unix uh, was the pipes. We saw Lorinda making the demo a little bit and how you could pipe different commands to make a longer uh, um, uh, pros uh, data processing. Um, so the philosophy behind that was that uh, a, a command, we have to understand that every, every command, we will see later some commands, it's a, a little software on its own. Uh, it's a little program on its own. So the basic uh, idea behind it is that it's very uh, flexible to retrieve a lot of types of data. And then this data, they can be passed as, so the output of the first, first command can be the input of a second command. So it was very important to not to be too picky on the data, because now with other programming languages, we see that we have to, for example, for C language, we really have to define, uh, or for yeah, C++ or JavaScript, no, not really <laughs> defining, 
Python starts to also be very strict uh, with defining uh, what you what data you expect to have. Um, and so that was the uh, small uh, scale of uh, uh, commands, but then that you can work uh, together and make it uh, more complex. So this is the uh, a screenshot from the <laughs> of the terminal. Uh, and this is uh, from my terminal now. Uh, it's not, I mean, we can see that there's much of a difference. Now, of course, you can also a little bit change uh, the colors, <laughs> palette of your terminal. <laughs> Turn it to a white box instead of a black box. And, but still the file system, file system remains the same. And I just wanted to show, to say here, because we, we mentioned, I think it was who mentioned about the, having control over and understanding the file system. Eh? Uh, that to say actually that the file system hierarchy, it's also not re the reality of uh, where your data is. It's again another layer of uh, virtualization. It's somebody or people uh, or the developers uh, who develop mm -hmm. and uh, work with the kernel, they make decisions of how to uh, uh, demonstrate or how to showcase what the file system is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, okay, so that was a little bit of introduction of uh, the development history of uh, Bash and the Unix. Uh, here we would like now to uh, switch a little bit about uh, the critique of uh, the culture around it. Um, this here we want to talk a little bit, uh, as uh, Winnie mentioned in the beginning, uh, how uh, the, culture, uh, the culture around IT we have uh, the oligopoly of uh, Amazon web servers and the Google Cloud services that uh, in order to make it more accessible uh, to uh, developers, uh, they, uh, they, are, they have designed their own uh, browser-based uh, tools to access servers, uh, which might be sound liberating. But on the other hand, it means that uh, because they are an oligopoly, we are all very much starting to rely on their own tools. Huh? And don't forget, it's a proprietary company, private company. It can uh, someday just uh, you know uh, bank, go bankrupt or just close down or I don't know, whatever. Don't say this happens probably the whole world uh, will come to an end. Uh, <laughs> so there, there is a problem there. Eh? How do how do these oligopolies try uh, conditioning the way we, we as system administrators uh, uh, learn how to work with, uh, if that's in, in this case, with servers. Uh, yeah, so they, we will see a screenshot uh, uh, after, but uh, just to su summarize here, it's about uh, having uh, these easy graphical and seamless interfaces, browser based. Uh, it's about uh, making it. Uh, easier in order to have this uh, uh, approach to technology uh, uh, through extractivism uh, and also to think less about maintenance, which is also very problematic. Of course, maintenance, as we talked at the beginning, a little bit CC, actually it's a lot of labor. Uh, yeah. So this is one screenshot of uh, Amazon. Uh, um, um, account, Facebook. web server uh, interface. Uh, they're talking about uh, uh, elastic IPs. It's also their own uh, vocabulary. Uh, it's another way to say that an IP is not fixed uh, and it can easily change. Security groups, it's also their own kind of uh, concept of talking about firewall, how we can actually open ports and close ports. And uh, they do that through security groups. So very uh, customized the way of talking about things. Uh, and then uh, uh, we want to now to switch a little bit about the problem in general around the uh, community uh, aspect in uh, free and open source and software development. Uh, while we're thinking of uh, uh, flaws and uh, flaws in a way that, you know, okay, it's open source is community, people are working on it, the source is there, we can have a look and we can all contribute. Of course, that's not the reality. Uh, and uh, especially for BAS, uh, in the mid 
2010s. Uh, there was a, a, a big insecurity uh, vulnerability that was found. And apparently it was there since the beginning of the code, which means beginning of 80s. But just nobody actually had, or, uh, or not, let's say there was not really a community working together to, to bring this to uh, in, uh, in public. And um, there's a lot of code. Yeah, this is from, uh, yeah, it's a common article uh, on wire. There's a lot of code that doesn't actually get very many eyes at all. A lot of open source projects don't actually have all that many developers involved, even when they are fairly core. This is a Linux uh, himself who makes a comment on, 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 the, on the article. This is another example uh, of a free software uh, tool, GetX. And I forgot to bake my manuals. Sorry. Uh, I left it for that. So uh, you can bring it to some serum and show them. Yeah, yes, I do that. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. And because uh, from this point, so GetX is a software for doing translation uh, in code, uh, enabling it. And uh, it's very thinking and annoying at the same time if you're not a guy. When you read the manual, uh, the first thing they say uh, at the very beginning is that they use he when speaking of the programmer and she when speaking of the translator in the whole documentation. Uh, somebody actually picked it up, a contributor of the, uh, of the software, and he went through the whole documentation and changed it to they. Uh, but uh, it's patch, it's called patch in a coding uh, vocabulary, was not accepted, uh, not only by the maintainer, but also from uh, the, more, the people that they are very close, let's say, to the development of the tool. The arguments were uh, quite irrational. Uh, I'll just pick one here. Uh, why they didn't accept uh, to replace uh, the binary pronoun to uh, more neutral? They say in a specific document or documentation, do we want gender neutral speak? If we want gender neutral speak, what is the English grammar element that works best? Here it's futile to discuss the second question, so the answer to the first question is already no. Uh, yeah, there is a link there to the whole thread. Uh, it's quite interesting. <laughs> if you want later at home to have a pick. Uh, because actually the main argument is that the, the etiquette of the documentation of a free software foundation is not about gender uh, pronouns. It's not the uh, preoccupation. Yeah. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a bit more about the yeah. problematics of the yeah, it's a continue it's a continual line of this kind of uh, critique of Flash or Unix in terms of the gender perspective. So this is a magazine uh, very popular uh, in the 70s and 80s um, in the US. So this is a magazine, a microcomputer magazine, which is something around hobbies or amateurs discussing ideas around computer technologies um, in a nutshell. So this cover, uh, which is um, in 1977, um, you can see like it's a very still typical, you know, like a family, like with a father, mother, and three kids, right? trying to open in this gift, uh, this Christmas gift, which is a new computer, right? So we can also see the man in the cover is looking very excited at the computer, <laughs> right? And then his facial expression and also body reaction demonstrate this kind of possessiveness and obsession as he isolates himself and the machines from the family, right? And meanwhile, the facial expression, as you can see, the boys um, are very curious and also appealing when looking into the gifts, whereas the the little girl uh, next to the boy, which shows a little bit of hesitation. Right? And then the woman behind, presumably maybe the housewife, um, is expressing clear contempt right, towards Santa, who seems to return a somewhat ambivalent <laughs> or slightly apologetic expression for bringing this machine into the home. Right? So in that sense, you can see just only the cover, uh, which complicate really the computing or the computing device is just only for men and reinforce the stereotypical view of housewives who don't understand or not interested in computers at all. Right? 
So this is very problematic by presenting computers as toys for men and boys. So this cover encapsulates the dominant masculinity of early computing culture and its enforcement of patriarchy within and in the family. So I think this a picture, you know, tell a dozen words, basically. So again, along the line of- That was uh, everything, and now we are, that was 2019. Yeah, 2019, which is a conference uh, around uh, Unix. Again, a picture tell a dozen words. Uh, so uh, even like from the early development of Flash, it's very monoculture, right? Where at that time, Richard Thurman hired Brian Fox, where um, Mara has mentioned in the mid eighties, right? But then it's also an ongoing male culture, um, especially cis male culture in the system admin roles, in conferences like this, and flaws in also in tech in, in general. Maybe it's useful to insert here. Uh, I don't know if people are aware of Peter, uh, Herr Peter Fallo, but he was uh, um, say the main figure behind the beginning of the Free Software uh, Foundation. <laughs> So other than finding these kind of references, looking through, watching a lot of videos, we have also done some empirical works, uh, interviewing people who are into Bash or as assistant admin roles. So like I know this male also. <laughs> yeah, we try to retell the narrative of, of Bash. We try to create our different relations kind of with Bash. I think this is also one of the agenda for us working with this kind of queer in Bash is like, how can we find different stories? You know? uh, and so one of the questions that we ask the interviewees about what do you think is the most significant disparity in the system admin, programmer, coder role, like gender, age, ethnicity, class, and why? And do you see the gap growing or being elevated or fixed? So we just, uh, capture two responses uh, here, just to give you a sense. So Mariana, who is actually sitting in this room, uh, <laughs> uh, she answered this question as this field, system admin, is still a very hostile environment for anyone who isn't a white middle-class cisgender man, and it's not enough to advocate for gender equality only as social economical background transphobia and ethnicity are also big factors in determining who feels welcome in system admin and similar roles. There is also the case of how the technology industry sees Asian men as more suited to these roles, profiling and generalizing them in another form of racism. So it's not just only about gender, but also race play into this. In recent years, there has been much more conversation around the issue and many companies and organizations are trying to address the disparity, not always the most successful of ways, as just hiring people to diversify the team without any cultural and systematic changes end up only making these professionals frustrated, distracted, and burned out. So uh, another respondent, uh, Kat, who's a trans uh, woman working in the tech industry, and she said, from what I see, the industry is still mostly white cis hetero men. Keeping up with changes in tools can be difficult and stressful. So I think this pushes people out. Mm. A side effect of this is that mistakes get repeated by a new generation. So this is sort of like just to give you a sense from the historical trajectory around the gender problem in tech to the current uh, situation, even though nowadays in 2013, people, 2023, people working with Bash in the industry still, you know, like being frustrated uh, working in the tech environment. So let's come to this idea of like queering Bash. What does it mean by queering? You know, uh, how can we do this? You know, it's a work in progress, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to start by uh, having a departure point uh, of Kara Killing. Uh, she is an American Black uh, humanities uh, scholar uh, working in the area of cinema, uh, African feminist film and media in the context of critical theory, gender and sexuality studies. And she has written an article called Queer OS. And she framed it as a scholarly political project. So what she, I, I just put in two quotes here because also like this is a way as a departure point to opening up what is normativity, what is normative practices in tech and how can we create a different relations uh, with technology. 
So, so for, for her, this is more like a speculative social, you know, political project rather than working with Bash in particular or, or Unix system. So she think about operating system as a more social uh, political system. So queer OS will take historical, social, cultural, conceptual phenomena that currently shape our realities in deep and profound ways. Even like the trajectory of how, what kind of people who work in Bash or Unix is also shaped by different ways of seeing and thinking, um, such as race, gender, class, citizenship, and ability to be mutually constitutive with sexuality and with media and information technologies, thereby making it possible to think any of them in isolation. So for us, working with technology is not just working with the functionality or the efficiency of code or syntax, but we need to take into the, the consideration of the gender issues, the politics, and also the whole development around this. Uh, um, so it understand queer as meaning and orientation to various and shifting aspects of existing reality and the social norms they govern. So she also mentioned about queer OS insists upon forging and facilitating uncommon, irrational, imaginative, and or unpredictable relationship between and among what currently are perceptible as living beings and the environment in the interest of creating values that facilitate just relations. So we think that questioning the normativity of practices in the case, for example, like programming practices, trying to disrupt the order, forming new relations, just for example, like today, we are creating a different space um, of querying bash or understanding technologies or trying out different things. You know? And I also think one of the important thing about thinking queer uh, or feminism is also address the notion of invisibility, what is invisible, what is visible. And we think that command line interface is a good way to think about a connection with our operating system or in a broader context of social operating system and also the machines. And these kind of textual interaction, you know, command line as a textual commands allow us to better understand uh, file and also our computer systems. So in a way we see operating system, not just only Linux operating system, is a, is a whole perspective in terms of how can we queer this operating system in relation to social norms, normative practices um, in tech. But one step at a time, <laughs> we start to- start. Yeah, yeah, we start with this, you know, there's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of things that we, you know, it's, it's a collective effort, it's a community project. It's not just, mm -hmm me and Mara, you know, to do it. And we hope, and that's why we organize this workshop because we want to hear from you and see how can we together change the narrative or develop a different ways of, of narration. Okay. So one of the ways, the starting point, uh, like um, talking by um, Kara Keeling is also imaginative, right? Thinking about uh, how can we see unpredictable relationship with with Bash, for example. So we are going to showcase a few creative works that designers and practitioner artists working with um, Bash. So yeah, this is from uh, Nervous Data, uh, uh, like a username, artist name, and uh, Jasmine Merhoff is based in uh, Germany, artist and uh, academic. Uh, we see here uh, uh, a part of uh, uh, generative uh, novel, um, the way she developed it, uh, so the first screenshot uh, is the result, huh? the generative text, um, and then the second screenshot is the script uh, that was used to generate it. So it's using, uh, uh, and then we can see a little bit again the piping that we talked about it uh, uh, before. Huh? It's very important uh, way to work with smaller uh, commands to make something more complicated. So she's using new random and yeah, it's um, actually um, a location in, in the file system that uh, it generates random characters and then pipes it to another command, the translate command, going then through this loop, looking for matching these words and then Fold with another command to give a specific uh, line length. Uh, then choosing a, a 
head is a get a command to uh, choose the first 110 characters of a text or of your input. Eh? So it's not text yet, eh? it's only uh, from output here, it goes to input here, the output of here goes into. So everything is changed, uh, changed until it's piped at the end at the text file eh? to get to this. And we see here that also from using a dictionary as a plugin. So it's also interesting to see in the terminal can also has plugins eh? or other libraries, tools that we can work together. Um, I think, um, yeah, this is another work here. This is work with image mapping to go a little bit away from the text based <laughs> uh, aesthetics and also to see that also possible to work with visuals. Mm -hmm. Golub Zevet is an artist and uh, video maker and uh, live coder uh, based in, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, she was actually artist. Uh, in residence in our uh, uh, video platform uh, of the sister server. Maybe we can uh, put the link. So she had a month uh, residency where for every week she would uh, create uh, a collage, a video collage, uh, made exclusively with uh, scripting, a uh, command line. And uh, the nice thing is that uh, uh, there is a link for so every week she would make, make an experiment and then we can see uh, the code uh, repository. So we also gave uh, a vet space in our GitLab on system server and uh, it's nice that everything is documented and uh, easy for people to access it and uh, try out. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to say that we're using Ethelfan Peg. The Peg is again a tool that we can install. It works uh, for a video and also for splitting or putting together images to make a video. Yeah. Um, for me, I work as a poet, co cool poet. So I have been working with Bash, um, like really short lines of code, like within like 29 of codes or 29 line lines. Or this one is like just only within 10 lines uh, to see it as a poetry, you know, like something that I will perform in front of the audience using my voice. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is sort of like I do um, seal screen uh, to sort of um, print the code because I'm very interested in the function called print. What does it mean by print? Uh, if we are not just only looking at computation wise to print it on, on the terminal or on, on your programming language, what does it mean by print in a physical way? And what are the unpredictability of print uh, functions? Um, and how is it different from computation wise? You know, uh, when we face different glitches or, or clashes. So this is more like a, a code poem critique of uh, gender binary um, in, in tech in, in general. And this one is more like executed form as, so both code is not just only read it as a poem, but they can be executed as well. So it can be run as well. So I do not put efficiency as the priority because some of the lines are not necessarily in terms of function lines, but I put priority in terms of pronouncing this. You know, code equal contract, ocean equal non you know, something like this. Um, and then the other work uh, that we find really interesting by Christoph Heck, who is a designer uh, working in the area of computational publishing. So he created um, a lot of posters uh, using Bash. Um, So, so you can, this a lot keep scrolling and scrolling, but this is not the point. But the idea is uh, for his project, um, he used uh, LaTeX uh, processing and Bash together, mm -hmm. which is similar to what Mara talked about with these kind of pipes. You can actually use Bash to call different software library and then to, to com combine different things together as one thing. You know? And he also document um, his script uh, with like really good comment, you know, able to break down what is this part is actually doing. 
and you can, you know, it's also free uh, that you can download and modify, and it has a really good readme and introduction to the to the project. Uh, and then the last one that we want to put forward is called Fuck Censorship by uh, Mark, uh, because we also asked around on Mastodon, like who's actually doing work uh, with Bash. Uh, so we try to put in work that are working with visual, working with tech and so on. Uh, so he has been really interested in banded books, uh, which has been censored. So by putting it like any kinds of like input text, then it becomes like a blackout of the tag. So you can also use bash in, in this particular. So of course there are many artists working with bash in a very different ways. And we are going to work with bash in the afternoon as well, in a, again, it's very different way. And um, interesting to see that all of these projects we show, uh, we have access to the source code because the, 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 the concept is very close to the yeah, free software, free culture. Uh, also. Mm -hmm. The last one. Yes. <laughs> so I think we'll just open a little bit the terminal. It's also with white background, right? Eh? Yeah. And that's showing you uh, some basic commands to navigate uh, our, our system. We can do an uh, ls and see what are the directories in our current uh, directory. We can see where we are with the pwd, print working directory. So we are the users and, and let's say path. We can make a directory and make the directory queer path. Uh, <laughs> it's your work computer, right? Yeah. Could you remember? <laughs> <laughs> we can then uh, uh, enter the directory with CD. And then we can uh, uh, maybe make a file with the nano or VI or M Emacs. We use nano now. It's in, it's, yeah. What's the file name? Huh? Text file? Um, nano. Bash the uh, text. Yeah. Can say hello. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, oh, we'll see you again. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> the OS is obviously quite resistant towards Quibash. Mm -hmm. It keeps up with your plots. Okay, I can't see it. Yes, so we can then uh, yeah see what's inside a file by cutting. Can I ask a question about the pseudo file? So the pseudo, uh, it means that uh, you have a root privilege uh, access uh, to do what uh, your user doesn't want you to do. And uh, Mariana mentioned, so uh, what you mentioned about uh, having the more privilege that can be sometimes a little bit more dangerous. Yes, <laughs> I, I think that's why I was wondering why, because I feel like there's a lot of risk in creating a hello world document <laughs> with a pseudo command. It's like... Actually, don't you <laughs> have to have a pseudo access to write a file? You're in the user directory, maybe? And it's locked. Yeah, but still yeah. it's but I'm, I'm getting uh, uh, admin rights for this uh, machine. Uh, and you are, uh, okay. I'm getting privilege. Uh, no, because now we are inside. Ah, uh, you didn't change the queer bus. Uh, uh, we cannot now uh, we are inside the queer bus. We're not anymore in the user directory. And still it's a problem. Uh we can also what can we do? Ah, uh, we can see maybe a system set file, a log file from our, our system with less. Less or more, uh, yeah, they have uh, more or less the same function. Uh, slash uh, var log. I think I need sudo ss, maybe. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. System, system log. Yeah. Like this? Yeah, I think you can also tap auto completion. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? I think we can also maybe see the last uh, logs. So if you yeah quit, if you quit, <laughs> if we tail it, we can see that maybe we can see the errors of the, the pseudo. Uh, so var log again, uh, system log. Yeah. 
So tail is a, is a command to see the last parts of uh, our loads. We can also give it, a, a, yeah, you see, you see, you get the errors of, uh, you are about to run the sudo command, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. the last message is. Anyway. What else can we see? Double get. Uh, yeah, double get is to get a, a, a web page in our uh, file system. The, yeah. Same, same oh, problem. No, 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 no. I think it's my spelling system. Huh. Yeah. I don't need to do anymore. <laughs> oh. oh, you do. It doesn't like it at the bottom. Yeah. That's um, Prove any fine. Yeah. Yeah. We can also remove uh, the remove command is usually a little bit uh, mm -hmm. risky. <laughs> so RF is for uh, recursively, recursively forcing, uh, removing uh, files inside <laughs> <laughs> directory. <laughs> <laughs> that might be good. <laughs> yeah, that might be good. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to believe that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow, they are really following your keystrokes, huh? probably. Uh -huh. so how was the presentation? Yeah, I think that's maybe we open the floor for questions. Yeah. <laughs>